Hello, this is Mark Hubbs with Aeros Gone Bullet Molds. It's 12 degrees outside, so I'm moving indoors today, and I'm going to give you a short video on Civil War era revolver cartridge pouches. Folks tend to forget that the early Colt revolvers that were purchased by the U.S. government were used concurrently with the older single-shot 54 caliber pistols. Revolvers, or repeating pistols, as they were called in the 1862 Ordnance Manual, were first used only by specialized troops, such as the U.S. Dragoons. The Army did not officially adopt them as a standardized weapon until much later. In fact, even by 1862, the Ordnance Manual does not list a specific revolver as being adopted for service, although it did list all official infantry and cavalry weapons in detail. The first cartridges for revolvers didn't have a specially designed cartridge box. The soldiers relied on the old Model 1839 pistol cartridge box that had been in service with the single shot pistols for years. This cartridge box is described in detail in the 1850 Ordnance Manual, but is not mentioned at all by 1860. The boxes were produced up to the eve of the Civil War, but originals are rather uncommon today. By 1860, a new revolver cartridge pouch was introduced to go with repeating pistols. It was designated a pouch instead of a box because it lacked the rigid tin dividers found in all other cartridge boxes. It had two extra layers of leather on the inside that acted as a spring to help keep cartridge bundles snug. Little is known about the government specifications for these pouches. They're not even listed in the 1862 uh, Ordnance Manual, as are all other standard leather accoutrements. Most of those seen today are the largest size designed for 44 caliber. There was a very slightly smaller version intended for 36. These were made in great numbers during the war years, and most were sold as surplus in the early 20th century, many in unissued condition. When I first became interested in Civil War artifacts back in the 1970s, Pistol pouches were the most common original leather accoutrement on the market. A pristine example could be had for $15 or $20. Now, that's no longer the case. The metallic cartridge era swept in right on the heels of the Civil War, and percussion pistol pouches were not needed by the military in the post-war years. That may also hint as to why so many original pouches survive today. My Army cartridge pouch is made from a kit that I bought from ACW, American Civil War, uh, kits.com. And I'll put the actual uh, URL in the notes for this uh, video. Uh, the company is run by Kerry Davison, and he's quite a skilled leather worker. Uh, he makes uh, completed gear, cartridge boxes, belts, bayonet scabbards, and so forth. Also, uh, Slim Jim holsters and post Civil War uh, revolver holsters and so forth. But he also offers a kit that's made up of pre-cut pieces where all the, all the parts needed to make a particular cartridge boxes are included in the kit. There's no instructions and you have to have the skill uh, to put them together, but it makes life a lot easier when uh, just being able to buy just the leather you need for a kit and having everything cut out precisely the way you need it. Uh, this little kit I think ran about $35. Uh, I'll post a picture of what the kit looks like here also. Uh, he marks it E. Gaylord. I'm my old leather worker. I used to make a lot of Civil War gear for reenactors and battlefield parks and museums. So I already had a uh, stamp made up with my name on it, uh, a sub-inspector stamp. I used to mark all of my federal gear with my own sub-inspector sub stamp. The box itself, uh, as you can see, has the dividers and will carry three, three uh, packages of cartridges. Uh, the dividers in there are also had a great place to store your issue tool should you have one for your revolver. I have a couple packs in here of Arsenal style cartridges. Uh, these are the ones that are made up, they're non-combustible, packed in uh, six per packages uh, with also a tube of percussion caps. This is the, the way that the majority of cartridges were produced during the Civil War. Uh, they were non-combustible, and I'll open this one up so you can see them a little bit better. As you can see, each cartridge is just rolled like a little miniature musket cartridge. Uh, the powder is separated by 
separate container inside to keep it off of the uh, lubricated bullet. Soldier had to tear the, the tail off of this, pour the powder in, extract the bullet, and load it. Uh, that's why most of the arsenals were beginning to go to a combustible style uh, cartridge, uh, but these were made by the millions during the Civil War, and I suspect that this is what most of the soldiers saw when they were issued a package of cartridges. Of course, they also bought cartridges from a, a score of different contractors. Many of them came in a special uh, box. Uh, this one has a, a wood box that's uh, a wood block that's drilled on the inside. And let's see if I can get this one open so you can see. And inside of that block are six combustible cartridges. And I have a, a, a video elsewhere that you can see that will uh, tell you how to make these and also how to lubricate them. These are all pre-lubricated. So we'll set those aside, talk more about the boxes themselves. So you can get three, uh, three packages of any kind into the box. Uh, then you can see there's still room for another arsenal pack in there too. We'll go down inside. And then still room for the nipple, uh, uh, the nipple wrench and screwdriver tool that goes in between the two layers of uh, leather there. Now this is the army style. And as I said before, these were made, and we know in of, of at least three sizes. There there's, tends to be no record of how they were uh, uh, the stats were given to the contractors to make them. This was the most common size, and it's uh, plenty big enough for 44 caliber cartridges, and of course with that it could also be used for 36. But there also were uh, a couple of smaller sizes that, that show up in the, uh, uh, in the surplus market too. And these things were sold uh, after the war surplus uh, by the thousands, and uh, I suspect that they were not used very not much by the troops, at least not by the troopers. Uh, they've been very handy for the officers, but a cavalry trooper also had on his belt a saber, a carbine cartridge box, and a cap box, and a pistol holster. Uh, and for a man with a, a 32 inch waist, which was common then, that pretty much takes up the whole belt. There's not much room left for a, a pistol cartridge box. So I think most of the soldiers just took these cartridge packs and stuck them into a, pa a, a pocket somewhere or into a saddle bag. Uh, wherever that was easy to carry them and they didn't really need the cartridge box. Now the Navy also produced cartridge boxes for their pistols. This is an imported uh, reproduction uh, of one of the smaller 36 caliber sizes. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not poorly made. I think it's a, a generally well-made reproduction. Uh, however, I think it's a little bit small. And as you can see inside, it has a tin where you're supposed to be able to insert uh, six 36 caliber cartridge packs, and there's no way that those would fit in there. Uh, now, if you take the tin out, which is tight, so I'm not sure if I'll try to do that now, uh, you could easily put three packets and packs in there, but uh, the tin, they would not fit. The Navy version was also unusual in that it had its own cap box that was on the uh, outside label, or outside uh, face of the box, as you can see. And there were also several sizes of these. This would have been the smallest one uh, that show up uh, in the market now uh, as among the originals. Uh, but like I said, this, this little box, uh, I think the makers uh, copied some dimensions out of uh, one of the reference books uh, that I have. It seems to match. And I suspect that reference books was incorrect. And, and as a result, the reproduction is also incorrect. Thanks for watching. I hope the uh, video was helpful to you. Visit our website at the URL shown here and you can learn more about our bullet modes at Air is Gone.